The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. On this special episode of Life Today. I'm asking you to watch. We're going to be talking to Isak Pretorius in Africa. Isak, I'm just asking you to just to share your heart with us. Conditions here are truly the worst that I've ever seen, James. Whether it's from floods in South Sudan or from drought in Angola, if we are not able to react, to respond, we will lose more lives than we have ever lost in the past. Next on Life Today. Well, I'm James Robinson. Betty and I welcome you to Life Today. I'm, I want to ask you to do something. You know, we come to you. We really want to be a blessing to you. We want to be a blessing to everybody because God wants to bless everybody. He loves us all so much. But what I'd like you to do, because a lot of times you say, okay, you're going to be sharing some things that really help me. Okay, let me just say this to you. I'm asking you to watch. We're going to be talking to Isak Pretorius in Africa. This is the son of the missionary that we worked with now for over 30 years before he went to heaven. But the ministry that God's love through people like you established saved with no exaggeration millions and millions of lives. Please listen to me. What you watch, what you see, and how you respond will determine the destiny of hundreds, even thousands, and ultimately millions of people. Betty, we went into hell for heavenly cause. But the point is, we saw these children so desperate and we loved them so much. I mean, boy, we never hesitated to hold the filthiest, most needy little child, broken heart of a mother. But you began to say, I want the line to feed these children to always be longer than the line of children needing to be fed. What led you to say that? Well, like you said, we've been there many, many times, and we've been in the situations where we would run out of food. We just, it was just hard to know how much food it would take sometimes. But I would see these precious children stand in line so, so orderly and waiting so anxiously, though, to get a a little bowl of porridge, to get something to fill their tummies with. And we'd get toward the end of the line, and these precious little ones would run out. What do you say to them? My heart was broken, so that's when I, we came back home and I said, James, I pray, and I still pray this today, that the lines that we see, those precious little ones lined up to get a bowl of soup, that the line that reaches out to them, that's you, that's me, that line is longer than the children's line, and it will always have enough food to give the last person in line. I pray that continues. And the missionaries have told us you're the greatest miracle they've ever seen. I'm, um, I'm telling you that you, you are really something because I would talk about how great the missionaries are and boy, they are. It's the love of God filling them. They take their whole family so many times and they move from their homeland right into the midst of that suffering to get the arms of God's love around people. And, and many times people say, well, I want to go over and help them. You know what the missionaries will say? James, please ask them not to come over because we'll have time to train all of them and we got to stay here. Would you just please ask the people watching to let us just stay here and do what God sent us here to do? And that's what Betty was praying. So, so let me just please, please ask you, listen to Isaac Pretorius, but listen for the voice of God. Listen to the heart of God expressed through missionaries like Isaac and the hundreds and, and right now several thousand trained workers that are on the scene as they help feed the hungry. We're going to talk to Isak in, uh, in Africa right now. Father, bless this time together. Isak, it is amazing how COVID has kept people from doing what they normally do and how it has increased the problem there all over Africa increase the need, the disease, the death. And I'm just asking you to just share your heart with us. Uh, 
because we, we need to know what you are actually seeing right now so our viewers can catch a vision of what you're experiencing and become the miraculous answer to the challenge. Isak? Well, James, the conditions in South Sudan are just devastating at the moment. We've seen the worst floods in recorded history in that nation, destroying the lives of so many, close to a million people that have been displaced. No ability to grow their own food, destroying all of their harvest. Many of them losing their homes. Those floods have destroyed 16 of our malnutrition clinics. Malnutrition clinics that you know very well are literally the lifeline to tens of thousands of children. What this is resulting in is that the plight of the mother in South Sudan has worsened to the highest levels, James. Mothers literally just trying with everything inside of them, doing everything they can to save their children's lives. But in somewhat of a hopeless situation, if we are not able to respond and to help them. Boy, Isak, I wish uh, Betty and I were right there with you. Boy, we love you. And all those mission workers. And what you said about the horrible effects of the flooding in South Sudan, most precious people, pushed out because of rotten religion and rotten government oversight. Beautiful people, like Franklin Graham said, more like New Testament Christians than any people. But while we're looking at that situation, there's another crisis that's the exact opposite of flooding in areas like Angola. Tell us about, tell us about that. Yes, James, in Angola, we're seeing the exact opposite of South Sudan. We're seeing the effects of multiple years of drought. This last drought being absolutely devastating because now there is no harvest in areas where we had been able to help families. And you know how important those crops are, James, because you've been a part of us helping those families to grow their own crops, to feed themselves, to feed their community. But that's all gone now. There is no ability because there is no rain, and without rain, we cannot grow crops. But what that also means is that we're seeing malnutrition clinics fuller than we've ever seen them. Many of the beds with two or three children on, children on the floor, not enough space to cater for all of those children that are literally now fighting that battle of life and death. Boy, Isak, it's, it's, uh, it tears at my heart because in the very area where the number's coming, once they find out you've got this food center, feeding center, then people begin to come many more kilometers. They'll walk for a day or two to get there. And we watched us run out of food, and we got these kids crawling in the empty barrels, scraping to get something. It was desperation. It what led you to pray for the, mm -hmm. the longer lines to, to feed than to get the food. And, and we taught those people. We got them on their feet, and they cleared and planted the plantation, they began feeding that little very, very area that was starving, feeding 10,000 hungry people themselves. So we know the importance of those crops now if they're destroyed because of droughts. And I mean, all the challenges uh, that have come to you has increased the number and the need beyond comprehension. Share with us, Isak, something that'll help people understand how vitally important their support is, please. Yeah, James, that truly is the reality. People are so desperate for food right now. They're, they're clamoring. They're doing everything they can, like those kids climbing in the pot to get that last little bit of that, that life-sustaining food. James, the reality is that the malnutrition clinics have been impacted. In, whether it's from floods in South Sudan or from drought in Angola or the pandemic that has overlaid all of that and impacted our continent in the most significant way. We literally, I'm seeing crisis like we have never seen it before. We're seeing more people suffering from malnutrition. We're seeing more people who, who literally are starving to death. They have absolutely no access to food. More people who are reliant on us because what we're doing each and every day is literally saving lives. The conditions here are truly the worst that I've ever seen, James. And the reality of that is that if we are not able to react, to respond, to do everything that we can do, we will lose more lives than we have ever lost in the past. Boy, Isak, when you talked about the malnutrition clinics now being so full, and those, those places have been destroyed 
all over South Sudan. We're being told that we got the crisis in Angola. We see the powerful effect of the malnutrition clinics, and we know we need to replace 16. Uh, in South Sudan, as an example, Father, we need a miracle here. We need some people who will step up. Maybe somebody says, I'll give a clinic. I don't know what they can do, but 24 people could step up and say, I'll give a 1,000. We'll have a clinic restored. Please do it, Lord. Okay, so you're the key. You're, you're the answer not only to that prayer I just prayed, but you're the answer to the prayers of all the missionaries and relief workers. You're actually, think about this, you're actually the answer to the prayers of mothers for their children they love so much. You're the miracle that they're longing for. And you know what uh, we found out? That during the pandemic, the crisis intensified. The number of people they had located that needed help and they helped multiplied many times. Isak explained the increase in need right now. And so that everybody watching will understand, we need a supernatural New Testament miracle today. Tell us what's going on. Tell us the extent of it. Yes, James, that's exactly what we need. We literally need a New Testament miracle right now because the crisis that we're seeing is of levels that I have never seen or experienced before. You know, in 2019, we assisted 1.1 million people. And yet in 2020, we assisted close to 4 million people. And that number just keeps growing. If we're not able to respond, if we're not able to continue to reach those people, to meet their needs, we're going to see more children suffering from malnutrition. We're going to see more children dying. We're going to see more people who are literally facing starvation because they have no access to any food at all. They're trusting us. They're looking to us as a lifeline to, to express God's heart and to extend His hands. And James, I know you know the level of this crisis. You've told me many times, you wish that every viewer would respond, would do something, would do what they can do. That literally is the prayer that we need answered right now. That is the miracle we need. Because if every viewer will respond, if every viewer will do what they can do, give the gift that they can give today, we will be able to meet the needs of the people here in Africa that are desperately relying on us. We will be able to save those lives. We can save those lives, but we cannot do it unless people respond, unless every viewer gives the very best gift that they can give. James, we cannot do it without you. And that is why I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart, please do whatever you can do so that we can save the lives that are relying on us. Isaac, when you know together we've witnessed saving over 15, recent reports over 17 million lives together. And uh, you know what the workers do. But you know it couldn't happen without the viewers of life today and people who are watching. Betty, they really are the miracle that mothers are praying for, that every hungry child needs. And it's a joy to be a miracle, isn't it? It really is. And I hope you'll continue to. You've probably helped us before feeding the children. Maybe it's your first time. But what an opportunity and a gesture of love to reach out to these children. They need the food desperately. These mothers want to care for their children, but they have no resources now. So please join with us and let's all together. It takes, like James said, it takes all of us to reach out and to fulfill the needs of these children. Well, you know, Isaac made it clear that the extremity of the crisis right now is almost beyond description. And uh, it's going to take a miracle. God, I'm asking you for it. And you use people to deliver miracles. They're the vessels through which you flow freely your love, your compassion. In Jesus' name. If we could see that miracle today of everyone watching who could do anything. Listen, do not say it's too little. Remember, $30 enables us to feed three for the next months. Not total child care, not housing. But you can see what happens when you give these people a chance at life. They're not looking for luxury. They're looking for life. Those mothers love those children. They're the greatest joy they have. They have no other entertainment. They don't live with all the things we're exposed to. 
That's why loving them has such a beautiful, literal transformative effect that changes everything. Remember, once we get them stabilized, we start feeding them at school to get them to go to school. Please be the miracle right now. Go online, dial that number there. It's a crisis line right now. It's a lifeline, always a prayer line. Right now, it's a lifeline. Would you go take your bank card or call and say, I'm writing a check, I'm making it to life, I'm giving life, and tell us what you're putting in the mail. But use your bank card if you're online or you can make it while you're talking. You can, just like a check. And that's why you should always use those bank cards. Would you make the greatest gift you've ever made to give the greatest gift there is? That is the life that God offers and the eternal life the missionaries present to these people, telling them the reason the love is coming is it's flowing from the love of the Father, God, who gave his son. So you talk about demonstrating the word, loving not just in word, but in deed, being doers of the word, demonstrators of the word, not just declarers of it demonstrations of the gospel. Would you please, please make the largest gift you can. If you can help us rebuild those malnutrition clinics, over 24,000 each. God, if somebody can do it, let them say, I've got a malnutrition clinic, a miracle. Whatever you can do, please do it right now. And you know what? I believe you're going to do it joyfully. I believe you have found the joy of being a cheerful giver that it is more blessed to give, to give than to receive. God's people need to get it about giving, not about getting. And I'm telling you, boy, you find life when you lose it in his kingdom purpose. Thank you so much for making that gift. By the way, if you get a busy, when you call, you be determined because lives depend upon it. Thank you so much. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering facing severe malnutrition and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Call now with your life-saving gift of 30, 50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. Also, please consider an extra gift to help immediately rebuild malnutrition clinics destroyed by record flooding in South Sudan. This urgent need is $392,000 above our normal feeding budget and is critical to help save the lives of those who are suffering most. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Christmas Grace. This eye-opening new 31-day devotional will give you a fresh perspective on the greatest gift ever given and the life-transforming hope found in Christ's birth. With your gift of $100 or more, request the Love and Thanks Tumblr set with scriptures reminding us that God's love never fails and to always give thanks. These tumblers will keep drinks hot or cold wherever you go. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Some see suffering like this and say it proves God is not real. Or worse, that He exists, but He's indifferent to the suffering of the people He made. But the truth is, it's in these very situations that the hand of God is most present. And you can see Him if you look with the right eyes. God is here in the hands of a mother doing all she can to sustain a sick child. He's here in the hands of doctors and nurses, holding back the onslaught of death in their countries.
and he's here in the hands of the missionaries who give all just to see one more life saved. But we can't do it alone. To touch those areas of greatest need requires help from people like you. Because in the end, the extent to which we can be the hands of God is in yours. And boy, that is no exaggeration. Somebody's future right now and even for eternity is in our hands. And you can take in your hands what I have here is a bank card. And I always say, please, to all of you listening, use these bank cards like they're a check, not a loan office. But I'd like you to get your bank card. And you saw images there of malnutrition clinics. That's the last hope. Betty, that's where we stood and watched mothers watch their child die. But we've also watched them go home. Beautiful stories of miracles. What I'm asking you to do, if you can help us with those malnutrition clinics, consider making a gift of a thousand dollars or more. They're over twenty-four thousand dollars. You might be able to say, "Well, I'll, I can do it." God's blessed me. He's trusted His resources to my watch care, and I'm going to change lives and save lives. But then remember this: we told the missionaries that Life Today, Life Outreach, our viewers. We'll try to guarantee the feeding of 350,000. When you've realized what Esau shared, that they went from caring for 1.1 million to in the last year with the pandemic, Betty, to having to reach out to 4 million. My God. And that means, boy, they, had, they came up short. They were sacrificing. And we asked God to increase. We were able to send them some more money because people like you went beyond the ask. Well, we need that right now. So let me just say to you, would you make the largest gift perhaps you've ever made? Father, some people have never made a gift to save lives like this. Just the joy of giving, not getting. Blessed to give than to receive, far more blessed. Help them to make their first gift or their greatest gift, the gift of joy in Jesus' name. Would you get your checkbook make the check to life, because that's what you're giving. Call us and tell us you're putting it in the mail. We need to know. Or call the number and use that bank card, like a check, and make the gift God put on your heart, because you are giving life. Let me just tell you, when you come and ask people to help day after day, and know that many of you are still sitting there watching, that's a miracle. Because so many people are so wrapped up in themselves. Betty, it's like they can't look beyond their world, which God cares so much about, which is why we come every day to try to minister to you in your world. But we show you one of the greatest joys you'll experience in your life is to change the life or save the lives of others. To care about the least of these, the overlooked. Jesus said, these are the sheep. They're ministering to me. They're going to enter eternity in my presence because that's the flock. That's the family. Thank you right now. We have some gifts to send to you to say thank you and to bless you and inspire you. But you are really giving the greatest gift. You're giving life. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you for going online. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition, and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Call now with your life-saving gift of 30, 50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. Also, please consider an extra gift to help immediately rebuild malnutrition clinics destroyed by record flooding in South Sudan. This urgent need is $392,000 above our normal feeding budget and is critical to help save the lives of those who are suffering most. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Christmas Grace, 
This eye-opening new 31-day devotional will give you a fresh perspective on the greatest gift ever given and the life-transforming hope found in Christ's birth. With your gift of $100 or more, request the Love and Thanks Tumblr set. With scriptures reminding us that God's love never fails and to always give thanks, these tumblers will keep drinks hot or cold wherever you go. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. I look, I look at this line of children here, and I thought, how can you not be touched? God's touched. He cares about them. And I think, what if I, I just visualize some of my grandchildren's faces on these children. And I think, what if that was one of them? I'd want somebody to come in and give them a bowl of soup. I'd want somebody to care about them. Well, these children matter. They matter to God a whole lot. And I know that your heart must be touched as you look at these lines of children, look at their little innocent faces. They don't have a choice. They depend on someone. Can that someone be us? I want it to be me. Thank you so much for caring and sharing and having a heart to reach out to those that are needy because that's God's heart and that's good. Well, Betty and I say thank you. You know, I've told you if you've been listening to me that uh, I believe you are the remnant. I think you're the remnant that will wake up the remnant that will wake up the church. You are demonstrations of the love of God. We're going to be able to hug pretty soon. I wish I could get my arms around all of you. I wish you'd let God put his arms around you and comfort you and your family the way he wants to. And as you experience and feel his heart, Ask him to express his heart freely through you, everywhere you go. We love you. Don't we have a wonderful viewing audience? Wonderful. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> you are too. We love you. God bless you. Thank you. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.